my granddad is really the one that taught me to love the sport of fishing. Now he was he was more of a crappie fisherman. He would occasionally bass fish, but but crappie was his first love. And from the time I was, I don't know, two years old, fishing was all I wanted to do. But I, when I was about seven or eight, he bought me a subscription to Bassmaster magazine, and I began to read about guys like Billy and Bobby Murray and Bill Dance and these guys that were fishing tournaments for fish to see who could catch the most fish and were actually earning paychecks for it. And I thought, man, wouldn't that be cool to someday to someday be able to do that? So, you know, becoming a pro for me was really the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. I mean, it's something that I've wanted to do. Um, you know, unfortunately, God has arranged my life in such a way that I can that I can do that. Um, specifically, after uh, after my years at Baylor were through, uh, I, I started a small computer business and and I was fishing lots of local tournaments. Everything I could get my hands on around, around the Central Texas area and really all over the state of Texas. And I was, I was spending so much time fishing that, that my computer business was suffering. And I was spending so much time with the computer business that my fishing was suffering. And it, it, it took my, the wisdom of my wife really to, to help me make the, make the jump. And she, she one day said, she said, look, she said, you've got to make your mind up. Either you're going to have to go fishing or you're going to have to be a computer geek. And, and she, she said, uh, you know, I know it would be expensive and if, if you want to fish and that sort of thing, she said, but if you don't at least try it, she said, you're going to drive me nuts. And, and I, she, she just knew that I would probably have regrets someday if I didn't. So she really encouraged me uh, to take that step. You know, and I mean, that, that's, that's true love right there when your wife's telling you, okay, maybe we can deal with a little less income if it'll make you happy and let's try it and see what happens and so um, you know I just I really feel like that was an act of God uh, getting getting uh, bringing her to the point where she said I want you to at least try professional fishing I mean I'm just I don't it's just a humbling experience now I'll never I'll never forget the first bass tournament I ever fished um, was actually before Jimmy Sue had, had encouraged me to turn pro but it's just kind of kind of what sort of I guess lit the fire under me from a tournament perspective my college roommate and I, Bruce Langford, decided to enter a, the, a Waco Bass Club tournament on Lake Belton. And, uh, you know, I thought I was a you know, hot shot college kid ready to, ready to take on the world. And we went out there that day, and I mean, it was tough. I mean, we, we, we fished the entire day, and we didn't catch a bass. We, we, I lost one keeper, about a 13 or 14 incher. Back then in Texas, it was a 12 inch limit. And we thought, man, it was tough, and we knew it was we were going to go to the way, and it was going to be tough on everybody. And we got to the way, and it was one of those days when they were just about jumping in the boat, and everybody had caught them except us. The, I think every other team in the tournament had a limit, and we didn't have a fish. And that that kind of lit a fire under it, made me realize, okay, there's a lot more to this sport than what I realize, and I'm going to have to take some time and very intentionally learn this sport before I before I get my feet wet in tournaments again. And so that's what I did. We. We, we joined the Waco Bass Club, fished one tournament, and dropped out. Because, and then that, that next year, I basically set my mind on picking one lake, and hey, I'm going to learn this lake. And then a year later, we joined Waco Bass Club again, and, and we were uh, you know, pretty uh, consistent competitors in the club then, and, and began to win some events and that sort of thing. But, and then you know, a few years after that, it, it, you know, through that th for the next few years, I was fishing all kinds of tournaments over, uh, across the state, and I began to win most of the tournaments that were on my home waters and lots of tournaments even at places that I'd never been around the state of Texas. The first professional tournament that I ever fished uh, right after Jimmy Sue had encouraged me to hey quit your job and and go fish for a living was on Toledo Bend. It was called a Golden Blend Invitational and that was Redman's uh, kind of professional level level event. It was my first time ever to fish against guys like Rick Klein and Denny Brower and Tommy Martin and Larry Nixon and all the big names of the sport. And I'd only been on Toledo Bend about three or four times in my entire life and I went over there and I won that event. And that was a huge milestone. I mean it, it did great things for my confidence. It wasn't because I was uh, some superstar fishing or whatever but I guess at that point I didn't really know to be intimidated by those guys and I went out and I, my focus was good. Uh, I was fishing to my strengths and again it's just one of those things that God orchestrated in my life. You know, Probably without that win my career might have taken a, a completely different path but, but you know you kinda, it's kind of like the little engine that could. You start believing that hey I can do this. Um, and I wish I could say that my career from there just really shot off and took off but that was in 1990 and I didn't win my first Bassmaster tournament until 1990. 
seven. I didn't qualify for my first classic until 1996. So I had a, I had a big learning curve in there. And you know, I, I think that's something that most pros need to realize with, with very few exceptions, there's a pretty good learning curve when you, when you get into professional fishing. Anytime you take your competition to the next level, um, you know, the learning curve in football or baseball or basketball isn't quite as long because those, the, the, the period at which you play that game isn't as long. You know, you got seven or eight years as a, as a pro in those sports if you're lucky. Whereas fishing, you've got 20 or 30 years. So a lot of times the learning curve is longer. There's a lot more to the mental side of it. There's a lot more to the gaining experience side. Um, and, um, you know, I think, I think one of the big things for me was when I started traveling around on tour all over the country, I began to fish waters that were different than anything I'd ever fished. You know, I'd never been on a tidal river before. I'd never been on a natural lake. Um, never been on really a major river system because, you know, our, our rivers in, in Texas, they only got water when it rains, you know. If it doesn't rain, all you've got to fish in is a lake. So I was good at fishing reservoirs, but most of the tour focused on these other types of waterways. So so learning how to fish those was, was instrumental to me. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget winning that first tournament in, in 1997 and just, just uh, I would say that was really the point that jump-started my career. Um, uh, now there, were, there, was, there were some personal decisions that, that were going along about that time that I, I think uh, really played into me even being able to win that tournament. Um, Jimmy Sue and I, uh, she was working as a nurse. Uh, she basically put me through fishing school. You know, you hear about people putting their wives, putting their husbands through law school or medical school or whatever. Well, Jimmy Sue was working as an RN and she put me through fishing school. and. Uh, she made the decision to quit her job. I was starting to get a few sponsors. I was cashing a paycheck occasionally. We had kids on the scene and we really wanted to be together as a family. And we, we, felt, we felt God was leading us for her to quit her job, for us to homeschool the kids and for them to travel with me. And as, as she quit her job and we began to make that transition, that's when my career really took off. And I, you know, uh, I know a lot of it was, uh, you know, I think there's, a, anytime you really following what you sense God's will is in your life, even though it may not seem like the smart thing to do financially or otherwise, you're never at risk when you follow God. I mean, it doesn't guarantee that you can start winning bass tournaments, but you know, He always meets our needs. He doesn't, he doesn't always meet our wants. And sometimes I get those mixed up with what my needs are, but, but he, always, he always meets our needs. And that was certainly the case in my career. And it's, it's really um, humbling and just reminds me, reminds me about the God that I serve in my relationship with Christ. When I look back at my career and look what my career was doing, which was this, until I really took a, a bold step of obedience to Him and began to began to use my fishing not as just something to earn a paycheck for me or earn a living, but you know, God, if you take this and you use it, it's 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 got to be a tool in Your hands, or it's or it's it's in vain. And uh, you know, He immediately uh, began to use that to produce fruit in in so many ways in my life. So, um, you know, that's that's sort of how I became a pro and and got to where I am.